Week 12, the penultimate bye week in the NFL and also the heftiest. Six teams on ice this week, likely leaving you looking for some answers as we come down the stretch of the fantasy regular season. Look no further. We got a guy there. CBS Fantasy Football Analyst Extraordinaire Heath Cummings here to cure what ails. Heath, Burrow, Allen, Rodgers, Cousins, notable quarterbacks on the bye this coming week. As you assess the likely names available, where should our priority be? Well, Anthony Richardson, 44% rostered, mostly because he got benched earlier because he was terrible. But then he came back and reminded us that Anthony Richardson could score 29 fantasy points just about any week. Basically, nine of the complete games he's played, 44% of those, he scored at least 24 fantasy points. You don't find that kind of upside on the waiver wire very often. Completed 67% of his passes in week 11, had 10 rush attempts. You put those two things together and you have fantasy gold. He has the ability to score 30 points any given week. I don't love the matchup against Detroit this week. I don't care. He's a top 12 quarterback. I'm adding him. I'm starting him. Even if you don't need a quarterback, you should be making a claim for Anthony Richardson. Yeah, definitely a evolving situation there in Indianapolis. What we saw a week ago in week 11 definitely gave us something to latch on to, especially in a point of need, if that is the case. Let's talk running backs because Bijan Cook, Kamara, Brees, leaving many looking for an RB stream start. Where, th- where should we be looking for a running back? This is an absolute disaster. I'll just be honest <laughs> with you. I think it was two or three weeks ago I told you this is the worst waiver wire I can ever remember at running back, and it's just been over and over and over. It keeps happening again. Maybe we have something with Amir Abdullah or Dylan Lalby with the Raiders if both Alexander Madison and Zamir White are out. I don't want to bet on that. Zamir White seems like he's probably fine. So I'm going to go add Justice Hill. He's had three different games this season where he's scored at least 11.5 PPR fantasy points. They often come in those really close competitive games where the Ravens have a hard time running the football. I wouldn't be surprised the way the Chargers have played defense this season if this is one of those games, if they have to throw it to Hill a little bit more out of the backfield. He could see four or five targets. He could score you eight or nine fantasy points. That's about as good as you're going to get off the waiver wire at running back this season, it seems. It certainly feels that way. I do have Audric Estime sitting on mine now and We saw the usage there changed once again in front of us. We're playing whack-a-mole at the running back position, so let's get to wide receivers. Perhaps a little easier to supplement need from your own bench in this case for those looking beyond the bench. Give me a top target to target at the wide receiver position. You know, it's so funny in Cleveland. Like, we had two months of Deshaun Watson, and basically nobody's any good at all. And then Jameis shows up, and now we have three starting fantasy wide receivers. It doesn't make any sense, and one of them's going to be bad every week, but two of them are going to be good. Last week, it was Jerry Judy and Elijah Moore, our top two waiver wire targets. This week, Elijah Moore didn't get added. Like, we, you look at Jerry Judy, he's, Judy's not available anymore. Elijah Moore is still available in 75% of leagues. 16.5 PPR fantasy points in two of his last three games. I love him in full PPR. Not as much in half or non-PPR, but I do think it's been basically 10 targets a game since Jameis took over. I would expect that to continue. Not a great matchup. In fact, a bad matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But that matchup is worse for the outside wide receivers. I think in the slot, he can avoid Joey Porter Jr., avoid some of the more difficult matchups. And if Jameis gets the ball out quickly, Elijah Moore can have another good fantasy day. All right, we'll see if that does come to fruition. Let's talk Taysom because... I don't know if this fits under one category or another. By rule, it does fit under tight end, but the do-it-all guy is going to be on the bye coming off one of those weeks. Seems like we get one each and every year, and maybe we got it, but there was literally a jumping circle in the green room here in Stanford on Sunday for a number of us who did start him. It was, it was one of the most fun fantasy watches in quite a long time. I was a part of that circle. A, a moment in time, but is it more than just a moment? Should he be in lineups when we look towards week 13? Absolutely. Our our friend Jacob Gibbs from Sportsline started a tight end centric fantasy league this past offseason, a dynasty league, and I'm in it. And so I drafted Taysom Hill, I think in round 13. Everybody forgot he was a tight end in that league. Taysom Hill scored 50 fantasy (laughs) points this week, 41.5 in a standard CBS PPR league. He's absolutely awesome. And the thing is, the Saints top two wide receivers are injured. He was already coming into this week second over the last couple of weeks in target share. This week, he led the team with a 34% target share, also had a 25% rush share. 
if he comes anywhere close to those numbers in the fantasy football playoffs, he's going to have the highest championship win rate of any player. He is a must add if he's available. He is a must hold if you've got him on your roster and we're going to start him in week 13. That first 15 play sheet just said Taysom on it. They just held it up. It just said Taysom. It was a fun watch early and then the long one to boot and 40 plus in most leagues as you said. Taysom Hill going to be one to watch and not likely out there. So if we are looking to claim a tight end, who should we be looking to? I, I don't remember a week where I could say this, but I have three different waiver wire tight ends that are all in my top 10 this week. And that tells you a little bit something about what Mark Andrews and Dallas Goddard and TJ Hawkinson have done for us lately. But my favorite of the group, definitely John U. Smith. Over 30 mm -hmm. targets in his last five games. Just had a monster performance. But that's, that's not just what it's all about. It's not the fact that he had 100 yards and two touchdowns. That's great. He's been heavily involved over the last five weeks. He's the reason that we feel so terrible about Jalen Waddell. Jonu Smith has been a top six tight end since Tua Tungavailoa came back. He has taken a bunch of targets away from Waddell. I expect that continues. He's a top five tight end for me this week. Add him and start him. Don't put a huge fab bid on him, though, because if you miss him, you can put a contingent bid out there for Will Disley. If you miss him, it's still okay. Luke Schoonmaker. Filled in for Jake Ferguson after Ferguson's concussion. It's a short week. We don't expect Ferguson back. Schoonmaker had an 18% target share. This has been what the Dallas Cowboys do, is they have a low-end tight end one. It doesn't matter what the guy's name is. So there's three really good options. Jonu is definitely my favorite, but you don't have to splurge. Yeah, some mobility there at the tight end position. If you do need help, we might be looking for a matchup as well when it comes to defenses. What matchup do you love, and why should we be picking up this defense? You know, we like the matchup against the Giants, no matter who they're starting at quarterback. Fair. But Tommy DeVito last season, I, I know people remember like he was better than Daniel Jones as a passer. He was also about 20 percent worse than Daniel Jones has been this season. So we don't think Daniel Jones has been great. Tommy DeVito was even worse, had a 17 percent sack rate last year as a starter. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I expect they're going to get after Tommy DeVito. They're a top five defense for me. They're available everywhere. And that is a Tampa Bay team still alive and well because of some of those Atlanta struggles. We'll see if it is defense first against Tommy Cutlets and those Giants. A sleeper pick. It's always my favorite, Heath. Where's the place I'm not looking that I should be? I, I spoiled it a little bit earlier, but look, Schoonmaker. Uh, listen, a lot of times, and this is a great DFS play, too, because the pricing came out before Ferguson suffered his concussion. But we saw this with Jason Witten when Jason Witten was like 38 years old and really not any good anymore. He was still a top, top 12 tight end. We saw this with Dalton Schultz. He went to Houston and pretty much disappeared. But in this offense, he was a top 12 tight end. Blake Jarwin had a few weeks as a top 12 tight end. Jake Ferguson has been that guy over the last year and a half. If Ferguson's out, and we expect he will be, Luke Schoonmaker steps right into that role. I love this guy coming out of college. Very good in the, his most recent game, and I think he'll be good next week as well. Keith Cummings, always business to tend to. We appreciate you stopping by here on HQ. The fun don't stop. For more on the Fantasy Front, download, subscribe, and enjoy to the Fantasy Football Today podcast. Keith Cummings, Adam Azer, Jamie Eisenberg, Dave Richard, the whole gang. Bring you the latest news and notes to make your week a winning one. Download and enjoy Fantasy Football Today.